Good evening, afternoon, morning, who knows. My name is Jaden, and I have been procrastinating so much that I missed the deadline for my holiday special. Hello there, and happy merry belated Chris Maconza, you filthy animals. And a happy new year. Today I'd like to welcome the new year and a definitely on time holiday special. The next amount of minutes will include a look at my most anticipated films of the year to come and my top 10 favorite films released in 2022. With a new mic and a renewed mindset, let's start off this video with the bombastic opening musical number. Wait. Bombastic opening musical number. Alright. <coughs> That elephant did not go to waste. This year, I caught 43 of over 200 feature films released, whether it be streaming, theaters, festivals, you name it. And honestly, 43 is a number that I'm not too ashamed of, uh, not too big, not too small, fairly average, all things considered. However, I did miss a few films that I think would make my list if I saw them in time, including, but not limited to, Sam Mendes' Empire of Light, Luca Guadagnino's Bones and All, Todd Field's Tar, Park Chan Wook's Decision to Leave, Mark Mylid's The Menu, Charlotte Wells' After Sun, and Owen Klein's Funny Pages. Along with the films I missed, here are some honorable mentions that just barely missed my top 10. Gerard Carmichael's On the Count of Three, Scott Derrickson's The Black Phone, Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, Billy Eichner's Bros, Dean Fleischer Camp's Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, and Ryan Coogler's Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Additionally, Brett Morgan's David Bowie documentary, Moonage Daydream, actually did make my top 10, but I omitted it from this list because it's a, well, a documentary. And this is only narrative movies. So... No David Bowie. Wait, sorry. No David Bowie. I love Dave Bowie, man. With that being said, here are my top 10 favorite movies from 2022. Number 10. In a world where comic book movies perfectly illustrate the saying, we'll fix it in post, Matt Reeves' The Batman was the film to prove DC still got it. I mean, Joker did it a few years earlier, but it's Joker. Guys, Paul Dono's Riddler is literally me. Zoe Kravitz Catwoman needs to be with me. The decision for Batman to be a detective instead of a rich boy action hero was actually a really refreshing take on the character. I'm honestly really sick and tired of the genius playboy billionaire philanthropist because Tony Stark is, is dead. I don't know if I can say that because like the guidelines and stuff. Dude, my, my Breaking Bad video got uh, age restricted because I'm trying to figure out because they don't really say what it is. I'm trying to figure out if it was the D-Rugs or uh, Gustavo Fring's Two-Face cosplay. So <laughs> the dark and gritty atmosphere justifies the need for such a character and it makes sense why Bruce Wayne would take up such a mantle. Gotham is a mess. It is, I think they say it in the film, it is a cesspool. I didn't know what that means, but I agree because it sounds really gross. The cinematography done by Greg Frazier is just gorgeous and makes it look like a real movie! A superhero movie that's not over the shoulder, over the shoulder shots! Yoo -hoo! The use of color, the way some shots are composed, and like they do this weird focus thing where something close to the camera will be out of focus and then the main subject will be in focus. It's super cool. The sound design is just genius and the score by Michael Giacchino never ceases to amaze my ears. They tingle. No, bro. No, that's Spider-Man. Um, the performances are pretty much all great, and I they often get overlooked, and I think it's because it doesn't have a... You want to know how I got these scars? The performances really authenticate the absurd cast of characters we are given to follow. You can currently stream The Batman on HBO Max. Number 9. I am a really big fan of Ryan Johnson's 2019 whodunit, Knives Out. The star-studded cast, the intelligent screenplay, and an impeccable vibe. It all just works, alright? And so does its sequel. Glass Onion. That wasn't a joke. Though I don't think it is as good as its predecessor, the scale is so much bigger, and the twist and turns the story takes throughout makes for such a wonderful viewing experience. Glass Onion is much more comedically driven than Knives Out, and it can work for its advantage at some points, but there are times where it can, like, kind of really slow down 
what's going on for a joke. Yeah, it can add some, as I described it a couple hours ago, some unneeded trim breaks here and there. We're talking about roller coasters again, baby! The cinematography is a lot of fun. I absolutely love the wacky camera movements Ryan Johnson decides to throw in there at some points. And James Bond as Benoit Blanc is... Well, he's one of the most entertaining characters I've ever seen. Not to mention his first scene in this movie. Watch, watch Glass Onion, please. And you can do so on Netflix. Transition! Number eight. So, I kind of made a video on Note, but I did not give it the attention it deserved. I really love Jordan Peele's work in Get Out, and this film reflects his intelligence regarding storytelling, suspense, and realistic characters that don't come off like that one Steve Buscemi meme. How do you do, fellow kids? Daniel Kaluuya gives an outstanding performance alongside the lively Kiki Palmer, Brandon Perea, whose character is a lot more likable than I first thought, and intermediately, the great Steven Yeun. However, the key aspect that pulls this film together is Hoyt Van Hoytema's stunning cinematography. From like the sweeping shots of the landscape, all of it, it's like, it's so beautiful. It really widens the scale and gives the film the rightful blockbuster title it deserves. You can currently stream Nope on Peacock. Number seven. So I already talked about this movie on here, but The Banshees of Inisherin is one of the most depressing, hilarious, heartwarming, gut-wrenching two hours I have ever experienced, and I do not regret a single second of it. The performances are as realistic as two lonely Irishmen can get, and it just really emphasized the impact the separation had on both of them. The supporting cast as well is just as good as you can get, and I'm really glad a slow burn like this is being recognized as one of the best films of the year. You can currently stream The Banshees of Inisherin on HBO Max. Number six, what can I possibly say about Top Gun Maverick that hasn't already been said? This movie just rocks, man. It succeeds at the modern reboot like no other, and is definitely worth the hype. Bad. Except for the romance. I could do without the romance. If only I had a main character romance. I could have done without the romance. You can currently stream Top Gun Maverick on Paramount Plus, and if you're lucky enough, possibly still catch it in theaters. What the hell are you doing, Regal? Come on. The movie came out in May. You can watch it at home. Number five. Luckily, I went into Barbarian knowing pretty much nothing about it, and that's the way to do it. The ad campaign featuring Alvin and the Chipmunks was a lot of fun, but I suggest refraining from watching anything about it, advertisements, reviews, anything prior to viewing. It is one of the most suspenseful and downright horrifying films I've ever seen, and I definitely recommend watching it if you haven't yet and you're into that type of thing. You can currently stream Barbarian on HBO Max. Number four. I was originally going to make a video about Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio by itself, considering my extreme distaste for Disney's adaptation of their first adaptation of Pinocchio. But, alas, I forgot. Oopsie! I am an absolute sucker for stop motion, and this furthered said sucking. Hmm. The character designs were so much fun, and the amount of classic PG stuff in this, it... How? There were Nazis in this. In Pinocchio! The new songs were a lot of fun, and Christoph Waltz knocked my socks off. I I still can't find them. Can I can I can I please have them back now, man? I I need him. School starting back up soon. This is definitely the best adaptation of a book I have never read, and definitely deserves your attention ASAP as possible. You can currently stream Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix. Number three, The Fablemans. Yeah, baby! I got the poster right there. Daddy Steve hit it out of the park again. I already made a video about this, but it was unscripted and kind of kerfuffled what I was trying to say. If you are just desperate to hear my thoughts, go watch it. But if you aren't, I'll give you this. Every single Steven Spielberg movie I watch makes me remember just how great of a filmmaker he actually is. Because like when I think of Steven Spielberg, it's like Jurassic Park, Saving Private Ryan. It's all these movies that are like blockbuster classics, and then I, whenever I watch them, I forget how much like genuine personality is put into like the camera angles and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what it is. What it is. You can currently catch the Fablemans in theaters or buy it digitally on multiple platforms. Just real quick, I'd like to shout out my parents. This year has been pretty tough for many reasons that I'd rather not talk about, and they are mostly the reason I have the luxury to do things like this. So thank you, love you, happy new years.
Wow. Number two. Okay, I already have a video on Babylon in the works, but I'll get my quick thoughts out of the way here. Holy wowzers, this movie is incredible. I genuinely don't understand the discourse surrounding this film. Like, I get it, but come on. It's it's Babylon, man. The cinematography is really impressive with the amount of one takes they use. It's also just, I love Damien Chazelle's like whip pans. Haha, <laughs> whip pans, whiplash. It just really made me remember what watching movies is like because it's like a movie that you go to the movies to watch. It's like a real film. Just three hours prior, I had seen Avatar The Way of Water and it was long and hard to get through. It was a mess. Anyway, Babylon is a perfect example of how to use two and a half hours efficiently then go off the rails for the last half hour because Spider-Man shows up. The entire cast gives their all and the Magnolia style of storytelling really worked in the situation and told said story in just a really satisfying way until the end. It's and it's not a flack. I really like the ending of this film, but like I said, it goes off the rails. <laughs> I made a video earlier this year ranking the four feature films from Damien and Chazelle, and to update it, Babylon is between La La Land and First Man. A very big jump in quality. To specify, it leans more towards the La La Land side of the spectrum, and you can currently catch Babylon in theaters. And probably Paramount Plus, what, next spring? It took them almost a whole year, maybe, it took them two, three seasons to get Top Gun Maverick on Paramount Plus. So, spring, summer? Come on, don't do this to me, man. I, I, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I knew it. You knew it. Pretty much everybody saw it coming. The number one spot on my list belongs to the Daniels Everything Everywhere All at Once. If you haven't seen this film, get on it. If you were disappointed by Multiverse of Madness because the title implied they'd actually explore the madness of the multiverse, here's a film whose title doesn't lie and manages to coherently tell a story while having literally everything you have never thought of jam-packed into two and a half hours. The performances are all wins in my book and Kehekwan, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I hope I am. Better win, better win the Best Supporting Actor Award uh, at this year's Academy Award, or I will riot. You hear me, Academy? I will create a Twitter account just for this occasion. And you don't want me on Twitter. I don't know what I'm gonna do on Twitter, but you don't want it. The editing is tightly paced and the screenplay is almost perfect. The only thing is that there's like 17 climaxes. I don't know what else to say other than you can currently watch Everything Everywhere All at Once on Showtime and those were my top 10 films of 2022. Woo, we got through, uh, well, like two thirds of the video, I don't know. Do you agree? Share your rankings in the comments below if the comments are turned on. I'm actually really interested to see what you guys think because I like seeing people's ranking of the year. And if Babylon is 28, a cough cough Austin Burke, I disagree. <laughs> you might think my ranking is very similar to a lot of others, and I agree, but my contrarian side does not. You want to know what's above the likes of Avatar, The Way of Water, The Northmen, and Weird, The Al Yankovic Story? Chippendale Rescue Rangers. That's right. What you gonna do, Martin Scorsese? Y'all are a bunch of lahoos of hers. I have made a severe and continuous lapse of my judgment. I would like to apologize for the way I acted at the end of that last segment. I got out of hand. One might say that 2022 was a pretty good year for film. And one will be right. It was. However, from the looks of it, 2023 looks just as good, if not better. So to continue the theme of listing stuff, I'd like to share a collection of films soon to be released that I am excited for in no particular order. Starting off strong, Cocaine Bear, directed by Elizabeth Banks. <laughs> Looks like it is going to be the next bros for my friend group. The trailer looks absolutely wild, and the only reason I said it like that is because wild was in all caps and all italics, and the cast includes the likes of famous character actress Margot Martindale and the late great Ray Liotta in his last role, May He Rest in Peace. Knock at the Cabin looks interesting, and the only reason I want to see it is... I actually don't know. Same thing with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Actually... I, I do know with Winnie the Pooh. It looks utterly insane. <laughs> of course, Quantumania and Shazam 2. What are you expecting from me? I like my superhero movies. As long as they're not Black Adam. Creed 3 looks pretty good. I like the first two Rocky movies, and I think Creed 2 was cool. I, I don't remember. Scream 6 has a cool tagline. New York, new rules. 
Oh! And I haven't seen the John Wick movies, but Keanu Reeves is Keanu Reeves, so count me in. Oh! The Super Mario Brothers movie looks better with every teaser that gets released, and I hope it is as good as it can possibly be. I hope it's as good as it looks. Guardians 3 looks fine. I like the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but I I think I liked them better when I was like seven, saw it in theater. However, the real ending I'm looking forward to is Fast X. I am ready for the Fast and Furious franchise to die, and I am definitely going to tune into his funeral. The new Little Mermaid doesn't look half bad, and the Flash looks awful, so count me in. Spider-Verse 2 is a no-brainer. Elemental looks interesting. I love Wes Anderson, so Asteroid City is a yes for me. Same thing with Indy 5, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. They're making a Herald in the Purple Crayon movie? Hell yeah, my grandpa loves that book. I would pull out a copy, but I think it's in the garage. Oppenheimer looks amazing. Uh, so does Barbie and Wonka and Dune 2 and Killers of a Flower Moon. I'm moderately excited for the Haunted Mansion movie. Should have gotten Guillermo del Toro, though. Just saying. No way, they're making a movie called Unfrosted the Pop-Tart Story. Hell yeah, I'm in. Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. This is the best year for cinema already. All we have to get through is Megan in January, and we'll be on our way to Cocaine Bear, and we are back where we started. This video was actually a lot of fun to make, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really excited for next year, and I'm pretty pleased with what we got this year. Uh, anyway, thank you all so much for watching, for enduring my nonsense for God knows how many long minutes this... See? And happy Merry Christmas Kwanzaa, everybody. Or belated Merry Christmas Kwanzaa. Ha happy Merry Christmas Kwanzaa. And have a safe and happy New Year. Stay gold, everyone. Three, two, one. Ball drop. You think you'll um, need that elephant